What's going on everyone? Hope you all have a great day today. And in this video, we are back working on Project Miata. And uh, as you can probably see, there is something completely different about the rear end of the Miata. Well, a little bit of a story time. Essentially what happened was, I was gonna film it. I promise, I promise. I was gonna film it. But then, I just got way too carried away. And this thing took, I know it's not even this complicated of a thing, but my life got busy again, as usual. And this whole situation took a month to completely build. So, uh, yeah, I just, as you can tell, it is a rear bumper bar, rear bash bar. Whatever you would like to call it, I made it for the rear of the Miata all by myself. I did not buy anything. Uh, the only thing I bought was the materials. So yeah, I think it, it looks really bad up close, like terrible. Like I don't even have words to describe how bad it looks up close, but it's solid. It's not going anywhere. Oops. I'm not going to get comments on it you know, later in life, but, or, you know, as soon as someone sees the video, but whatever, regardless, I built it. I painted it white to match the wheels that we just did not too long ago. Um, so it looks pretty awesome. I'm really stoked on how it turned out, but in today's video, today's video is gonna be something awesome, but I'm gonna grab the part and show you. Voila, I present to you Rev9 coilovers for the Miata. <laughs> I forgot what brand we were, I bought them so long ago. But we are finally putting coilovers on the Miata and it's gonna be epic. Uh, but honestly, um, I've had a friend that put these on his Miata and they, they looked the car look excellent. So I'm excited to see how, they're, how it's gonna look and feel on my car. I'm assuming very similar, but uh, I did a review on his Miata. Um, I'll, I'll post it down in the comments um, for you so you can watch it for yourself. But it, anyway, that car had Rev9 coilovers on it and it felt nice. It made the car super low, which is what we all want. And you know, for the price, I think it's gonna be great. So that's what we're doing. We're going to be putting in Rev9 Hyper Street 2 coilovers um, on the Miata. And you know, we're gonna see how it looks and I'll kind of blabber about um, is it worth it or not to put Rev9 coilovers in your car. But anyway, uh, we're gonna start with the rear. Um, looks pretty straightforward. And yeah, we're gonna blasting these wheels off and uh, I'll keep you guys Follow it along. All right, dude, I wish I had one of these in just a socket form, so I don't have to, you know, do, do that. But yeah, we could rip this wheel off. Now, NASCAR, if you're watching me, uh, take, take note. Time. So let me get you right in here. So on the top through the trunk, there's gonna be two little nuts that you take out. And then it's that guy right there that you also take out. So there's two ways you could do it. When you take that bolt out at the end, you should just be able to push the whole hub down and get that guy out of here. Or there's another way to do it. You can take that out and that out right there. It's hard to see it. The camera's not focusing. Take that one out too. From there, you could uh, 
just drop the whole lower control arm. I think even maybe take out the swivel and like take the whole lower control arm, swing it down and do it that way. Or just step on the hub and pull it out. So those are like kind of your two options for the front in or in the rear, excuse me, in the front, it's gonna be a similar story, but it is a definitely a time to replace these. And um, in the front, I can show you from the bottom too that even more reason to replace them. So let's get going on taking out um, this whole strut assembly first, and then we're gonna copy paste it on the other side. And then from there, we'll move on to the fronts. And down here, these are the two nuts that I'm talking about. Take those two off, take that bottom one, you know, so three, three things you have to unscrew to get that out. That's pretty easy. So we're gonna go ahead, do that. And then, uh, yeah, I'll let you know when we get this guy out. Okay, so we got one out, definitely. Definitely a reason to replace them. This is blown, all of them are blown. And then this is compared to the the new one. Um, I think when I get it on the car, we're going to, because it is a little bit shorter now, um, but I think what I'm gonna do, if I don't like the way it sits, then I will definitely uh, lower it more. But for right now, I think this is going to work out just fine. All right, so we got both sides in on the rear. I don't know that, that is just paper, but that's my only concern here is it, uh, it's really hard to see with the camera, but the CV axle is pretty close to touching that. I mean, you can kind of move it out of the way a little bit and it doesn't touch, but I mean, it's technically, I can see light through and through on the boot but it is it's pretty close and the last setup was pretty close too so i don't think it's that big of a deal but we got both the rears in pretty straightforward but yeah so we're going to um put wheels on and we're going to try and get to the uh the front tonight um but yeah let me let's throw some wheels on and drop this thing and see how the rear looks Dropping the car. Yeah, it's definitely not as dumped.
put our our canuts off to the side. So you may notice a flaw in their plan, and that was kind of silly. Dude, this card has so many random bolts in it, it's not even funny. So, so we were in like disconnected for the most part. That tie rod blocks that bolt, so we're just gonna leave it in. Um, so now, I'm gonna take the big impact and a wrench down here on the strut mount itself on the bottom. Big long bolt, nut and washer. Bada bing, bada boom. That comes out. Move our impact to the side. So now it does start to have a little bit of play. Um, so. kind of two ways we can go about this but we're going to actually go up top and there's two 13 millimeter bolts or nuts excuse me that hold the strut on itself so we are going to switch to the 13 naturally Okay. So that, see how that just all popped out? Okay. So this is the part where we grab. If you have a pry bar, this is definitely the time to use the pry bar. But if you don't, you just grab a long piece of tube metal pry that sucker down <clears throat> all right so when you have completely destroyed um, here, let's get some light on that. Completely swollen bushings that make it twice the size on the bottom there. It's uh, definitely a lot harder to remove when they're stuck. So if you look at that one, right? And then look at this one. Super nice how it's supposed to go. Not bulging out on the side. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this one in. This is it with nothing inside. And I also took out that end link and everything right there. To the right, that's the shock mount. And then to the left, that is the sway bar link. It's also easier than I found if you just loosen the whole sway bar up top there. You can kind of see it's, it's uh, loosened a little bit, but with that loose, when you push this whole assembly down, um, it hits this, hits the sway bar. So you push it all down, it's 
this is gonna flex with it when you push everything down. So with that loose, um, and this is how the top is looking. Bada bing, bada boom. So I'll basically just repeat the process just to reverse and putting the brand new one in. Oh, yeah, that was a pain. That was way harder than the other side for whatever reason. But, well, I'm going to uh, get this, get that one in. I'll pick up the camera when it's in the car at least. How about that? All right, ready, set, go. All right, so here they are in this. So they're, I measured both from center hub to the uh, about the top of the fender here. Um, they are exactly the same. So that's it in the car itself. Looking rather dashing. I need a zip tie that uh, UBS wire before I forget. Do what I mean? It's like on the side here, and uh, the bracket itself is like you can't see it. It's in the back, back of the shock mount there. But yeah, that's it in. So, but like I said, both sides match. So we're gonna throw some wheels on, and I'm gonna drop it, get it off jack stands for the first time in a week, and. Uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Especially the rear. So the rear, we're still having a, a, an issue. Um, I can fit, you know, a finger and a half in there. And yeah. this is what I mean by it's really crowded at the moment. This side, I can barely fit a finger in. So I don't know. I'm, I have a feeling I'm not gonna have to touch the front at all whatsoever. I'm probably still gonna have to play around with the, the rear quite a bit, but I'll mess with that on a different day after I get some miles on it, which is the, what I think of what I'm gonna do. After I get some miles on it, I'll readjust everything right height wise, and then I'll kind of give you the big reveal. But yeah, I think that's, what I'm gonna do to, uh, for tonight, that's all I'm gonna do. And I'll pick this up on a different day. But yeah, so far so good. I, it might be till full. For me, it would be after Christmas when this video goes up. So we'll just have to see. I have to drive it a bunch, but yeah. I'll pick it up whenever I pick it up. <laughs> 